In watercolor, there's actually a recipe for success. And we need to remember to follow this recipe. That's one of the biggest hangups from so many students is they wanna jump ahead. But if we can understand the recipe and follow the recipe, we can have a lot more success. So I've talked about this before. I have a video all about the different washes of your painting. But today I wanna to talk a little more specifically about what we're going to do in each one of those washes and how that these layers layer together and add up to equal the whole of the painting. So let's talk about our first wash. You know, I've covered this in the past. I like to wet down both sides of my paper and paint in a way where I'm covering most of my paper in my first wash. Now, what am I trying to accomplish in this first wash? I want to paint the lightest values of my scene. In and something that can look really beautiful in watercolor and, and can give you a lot of strength in your watercolor paintings is by layering. And so our first wash is the first layer. And, and what we want in this first layer is we want the lightest values of whatever it is we're trying to paint. So let's take a figure. So if we're, we're painting a figure. And so the figure has some skin tone. The figure has so the light colors of the fabric of the clothing that the figure is wearing. So those lightest colors, we wanna place those in our first wash. And a lot of objects in your scene, if, if you're painting in light, they're gonna have a shadow side and a light side. So we are painting the light side of this object in the first wash. So when you think of the painting as a whole, the second wash is to create a large connected shape. With our middle value wash, Sometimes you might be painting around a figure to define that figure more, and you're preserving the light colors from the first wash that you just painted. Now, as well as preserving those colors, you're also layering colors where there's more strength. We've painted the light values in the first wash. The next wash, we're painting the middle values of that figure. So if the figure is wearing a green shirt, you paint the light green, really light green on the first wash, darker green, on the second wash over the figure shirt. So you can define the figure and then add some strength and, and something more solid to the figure that you're painting. And when you have a lighter value and a darker value of those two colors, you're starting to create something really interesting. You're already you're starting to see a shadow side and a light side of a figure. And the third wash, as I've talked about before in other videos, this is where your darks and your details come in. And so overall, you're thinking about darks and details, and you want to try to connect the dark values of that wash as well. So you're getting a payoff from the first two washes in your last wash, when you finally are getting a full sense of light in your scene. So let's go back to talking about painting our figure. So you have the light skin tones, you have the light color of a shirt, you have the middle um, values of the skin and the shirt. And then finally, you have the dark areas. Maybe there's some dark shapes that define the figure and you're painting around the other values that you've painted before. But maybe there's also some dark on the figure itself. So when you finally have your full range of values, your light values, your middle values, and your dark values, you have completed the recipe and you've layered these values to make a complete scene. If you can trust the process, if you can follow the recipe, you'll have a much more engaging, more dynamic, more complete painting. Because the tendency is, in this first wash, I need to paint all of my values. But remember, all of these separate washes, all of these separate decisions add up to make your complete painting. Follow your recipe, remember what the goal of each one of these phases is in your painting, and remember these steps as you move forward. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips 
to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. So thank you for spending some time with me. I hope that this is helpful and you understand the recipe and the process for creating a strong, bold watercolor painting. Keep practicing, keep pushing, keep moving forward, and I'll see you next time.